input and output hardware for programmers so hardware that is specific for programs includes devices designed to enhance the programming workflow debugging and software development processes of programmers when they're creating new programs so firstly we have that of debugging tools used for debugging and analyzing code execution Features include real-time monitoring, breakpoints, and stepping through code and analyzing program behavior. And examples of specific input and output hardware include hardware debuggers, logic analyzers, and in-circuit emulators that all assist in the process of finding bugs in systems when we are developing new applications or source code for mechanical systems. Okay, there are specific tools that we can attach to uh, physical devices and we can read data from those physical devices while we are doing these debugging processes ensuring that the code is aligned correctly with the hardware it's being made for. The next category that you might be very familiar with is that of specifically having high powered workstations. High performance hardware with advanced processes such as the CPU, a high powered CPU, as well as memory, a large capacity of memory that controls the amount of live data on screen, as well as fast storage. These days, solid state drives that make use of flash memory that support working on resource intensive tasks, which is commonly done by programmers because they are programming for larger systems. And this can assist with things such as compiling code, testing prototypes okay, that might be linked to a physical, mechanical or robotic system, as well as rendering graphics and video for an application and which in uncompressed format involves the use of large file sizes. So we need uh, the programmers to have high powered workstations in order to support this, ensuring that their system's frame rate and there's a, no lag that comes as a result of doing these operations, ensuring that the system is developed and tested efficiently and obviously supports the programmer's workflow. The next category is that of ergonomic accessories. Essentially, ergonomics relates to the relationship between people and their work environment. And essentially, programmers are sitting at workstations for prolonged periods of time. So they need devices as well as other furniture uh, too that support them working these uh, long periods. So in relation specifically to devices, this could be things such as ergonomic keyboards and mice that are arranged in ways that allows the programmers to rest their wrists and have their arms in relaxed states while using these input devices, as well as an adjustable monitor stand that allows them to raise and lower their monitor and angle it so that the top of the monitor is accurately in line with their eye level, reducing strain on their neck, as well as giving them enough space between their eyesight and the screen in order to see everything. So all of this stuff is, has the goal of assisting the programmers in maintaining a better posture, reducing strain on their body parts, as well as keeping in mind things such as RSI, repetitive strain injury, which comes as a result of prolonged periods of using a computer, potentially usually on the wrists of people. And that's why we've got all those things that support that area of the body, as said with the keyboards and mice, because programmers are spending lots of times, long periods, programming code into the applications they are developing. So they need to have these ergonomic accessories because the injury is not likely going to happen straight away. It will happen over a long period of time and affect them later in life. So they've got to look after themselves at a time when they are working. The next category then is that of development boards. These are programmable boards that provide a platform for testing and debugging code, okay, and allow for systems to interact with sensors and actuators of mechanical or robotic systems. All right, so we're developing these uh, mechanical systems and we can use a development board to apply the code and then see how it works as well as give us feedback about how the code is uh, going within these programs. So popular examples include Arduino as well as Raspberry Pi boards, which we can use for the coding and for systems that are not specifically the traditional type of computer. Okay, they're more mechanical or robotic systems. And then the final area we're looking at is that of efficiency devices. So once again, mechanical keyboards that offer more tactile, which means when you click, you feel the buttons and it's more responsive to the actual programmer as they're typing as well as customizable typing experiences. They can change the key layout to suit their needs and allow it to fit in with their own personal workflow. Okay, and as well as that's on the input side, but on the output side, having a multiple monitor setup, okay, and obviously that's always a big flex when we're doing any type of work that we have multiple monitors set up, but 
essentially it increases the digital workspace of the programmer so they can have multiple interfaces open which you can always do in a traditional Windows setup but it gives you much more screen space to spread that out upon so it allows programmers to write code and view documentation and test up uh, these applications simultaneously they can do multiple things at once and then once again this needs to be backed by a high powered workstation because if you're going to be running three interfaces all doing intensive things you need the cpu ram and storage that supports this happening so these do overlap with one another as well but these allow for the programmer to efficiently create things because they're not opening and closing and switching between uh, interfaces all on a single screen. They can have everything open across multiple screens, use their input devices that are efficiently set up to, uh, with their workflow to interact with the system and all the information they need is on the screen, allowing them to code and get things done in the most efficient way possible. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of input and output hardware that is specific to programmers and allowing them to do these imp uh, common processes that often happen with programmers. And essentially with coding programs, debugging programs, and we're also understanding that traditional hardware is used in this case too, uh, input processing and output devices too, but this is more specific for programmers. And that they're using high powered workstations that are powerful enough to support what they are developing while also including ergonomic features with their hardware that allow their bodies to stay healthy for prolonged periods of programming and essentially allowing programmers to create uh, applications as efficiently as possible in order to complete their work and satisfy the needs of the organization they're working for in the creation of different projects.